lot of times in a project, we want to be able to save data out so we can refer to it later, retrieve it, bring it back in, share it with somebody else. Or we might want to have settings be persistent as we're changing colors and so forth. We can record those in a text file, kind of like we would do maybe a cookie with uh, HTML files, and be able to load those back in and modify our interface automatically when we start the project. Easy way to do that is working with text files, and a text file is simply unformatted text. We would typically create these with a text editor such as Notepad, but you can save Microsoft Word documents or documents in other word processors as just straight text format. It will have an extension of .txt. All the formatting such as fonts and margins and colors and sizes would all be stripped out. So here is a demonstration. I have a, a Visual Basic project or a C-sharp project that has a text box named TXT News. And then we have a text file located, in this case it's in the, in the same directory as our application, as our EXE. But in order to bring this data into our project, we have to create something called a screen reader. You can kind of think of this as a connection or a channel between the two files. And once we read that data in and we execute our program, in this case I would have it maybe executed in the form loads, it would bring that data in from the text file or the text in from the text file and load it into our text box. In order to create a stream reader, we have to utilize the system.io class, IO standing for input output. And in VB, this would require using the imports statement. We would put the imports system IO at the very top above our public class form one declaration. And in C sharp, we would use the using statement instead of imports. It would be using system IO. Of course, don't forget the semicolon. And that would be again at the very top above our namespace declaration. So having made reference to that system IO class, we can now declare an instance of a stream reader object. And I just named it SR for stream reader. So in VB, I'm dimming SR at stream reader. And in C sharp, it'd be stream reader SR semicolon. That creates the stream reader object or instance. And then we would create the channel or open it to our text file we want to read in. Now in this case, I have a text file that I created with Notepad and I saved it into the debug folder of my project, which is where the executable would initially be located. So when I test this, it will find the TXT file. We'll look a bit later on at how we can search for a file on our system anywhere uh, using an open file dialog. But for now, we'll just keep these two files together, our data file, or our text file, and our application, our EXE. So I just put it in the debug folder. I named it viz underscore studio underscore news dot TXT. And so our statement is sr equals file dot open text and then the name of the file we want to open in quotes. Now if I had this in another directory, I could put a full path there. So I could have it as c colon backslash this studio news dot text. It would be in the root directory then on my C drive. Or I can include subdirectories in that path statement as well. Same thing on the uh, C sharp side, just a semicolon uh, at the end. And then I'm going to read to the end of that file. So I'm going to use the read to end method. That's going to grab everything in that text file. And I'm simply going to assign it to the text property of TXT News. And that's what would cause it to display in my document. And then the last thing we need to do is close the link to that file. So we use sr.close method. Same thing in C sharp, semicolon at the end. And so we saw the result there was that it um, loaded that text into our executable file and placed it in TXT News. So that's how we'd read a file in. Let's look at how we'd write a file. I've added a button into my project here uh, called BTN Save, and the text of it says Save Changes. And to write a file to, uh, to our drive, we would use a stream writer object. And so I'm going to create an instance of StreamWriter, and I'm naming it SW for StreamWriter. And then I'm doing the same thing as I did in reading the file, except rather than opening the text, I'm going to use Create Text. 
and I give it the name of the file. Now, if I'm using the name of a file that already exists, it's going to replace that file with this new file. And that's what create text does. So if the file already exists, we're going to overwrite it. And it's a great way just to automatically update files. There's also an append text option we'll look at in a minute where I could add to whatever's already there. So I create this text file. It's now an empty file. If something was there before, it's now gone. And then we're going to write to SW the contents, in this case, of my text box. And you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, I edited the text that it had brought in through the stream reader. So I had to load the text just as we were doing before. And then I made some modifications. I added SMCC at the very beginning, and I changed the date to 11-9-2012. When I click Save Changes, that text file has changed from what it was before to now including SMCC and the new date. So I've overwritten the old file with the new file. Once we're done with that, we want to make sure we close that uh, channel to our text file. And if I wanted to add to what's already there, I would append by using the file.append text instead of .create text. Same name of the file. So that file already exists. And I'm going to write the same information to it. But now it's going to add it to the end of that file. And you can see here the demonstration. Here was the old file in the white and what we added to it when we save changes with what I've got highlighted here in the yellow. You would typically really use append to or append text when you are working with databases, text-based databases like comma delimited databases. You may want to add records to the end of that file. Um, when we're working with saving settings out for an application, we're probably going to use open text or for replacing all the data um, where we've read it in and made changes and want to save it out, we probably use open or create text as well, not open text, but create text. So that's how we work with uh, files in um, Visual Basic and C Sharp. Let me just run the application so you can watch it. So here then is the code for my project in C Sharp. I've got a form load event that's going to read in that text file using a stream reader named SR and place all the contents of it by reading to the end into my text box named txtnews.txt and we'll close the file. I also put a line of code in here um, to set the selection start equal to the end of that text so it wasn't all selective, just puts the cursor at the end since it's the only object in my application outside of the button, it's got the focus and as such, all the text would be highlighted. This basically deselects that text. And then we make changes to it and click the Save Changes button. It's going to run this code. We're going to create a stream writer. We're going to create text as far as a new file. Same file, so we're overwriting the old one. And I'm going to write the contents of that text box to that file and then close the link to the file. Let me go ahead and run the application. So when I start the application, it reads in the data from the text box, and I get Visual Studio Programming News 11 7 2012. Let's just make a couple changes to that. Let's change the date to 11 9. And I'm going to add SMCC here. And I'm going to save changes, and I'm going to close the application, and we'll restart it again. And when I restart it, it now shows those changes that I had saved. So our data is being persistent.